Hey everyone, my name is Lucas, and I'll be showing you how I made the Elven Dagger from Skyrim. So the first thing I did was go over to the Skyrim wiki to get a reference image of the Elven Dagger, and I imported that into Inkscape, and I used it to generate a template. Once I had that printed out, then I could cut it out. You can actually cut off this bottom section here, since that's just wrapping around the base of the handle and you can actually cut off this back section too here. Before you cut off this back section, we'll want to put uh, a couple little lines here, that way we can line up the two pieces later. Then just transfer the templates to foam and cut it out. For all the little pieces, we'll want to cut off the textured side, so that way both sides will be kind of flat. For this back little piece, we'll also want to make it a little thinner, so I'm using a pen here to make a level line all the way across which I can use as a guide and I can line this up on the main blade just to see if I like how thin it is and I can always cut it back if I want to. Here I'm making a cut that's only maybe a millimeter deep. When we take the heat gun over this the cuts will expand out and it'll pop up as little designs in the foam. Here's a close-up maybe you can see that. For the eagle pommel thing, we'll want to copy the entire pattern onto the foam. And then for the line that separates the two halves of the beak, we'll also want to make a really thin cut. To copy this part of the design onto the foam, I used a needle to poke holes into the foam where each of the lines start and stop. And then once I remove the paper pattern, I can use a pen to draw the lines between the two different needle points. And like what we've been doing before, we only want to make really shallow cuts here. Then copy this part of the template onto thin craft foam and cut it out. So for the Elven Dagger in the game, the blade actually tapers in two different parts, one on the cutting edge and one at the tip of the blade. You might be able to taper both of these in the foam, but, but I tried doing it twice before and it didn't really seem to work for me. So for now I'm just kind of leaving it with square edges. So at this point I probably have to, footage of me showing how I made the handle, but looking at the final result it doesn't really look so great. What I might try to do in the future is take a thin piece of craft foam and try to score in the pattern, kind of like what we've been doing before. That way when we use the heat gun, we'll kind of see that pattern, but it won't be as messy looking as what I have right now. I've updated the template to have the handle pattern, so if you try making this, I'd love to see if it works or not for you. For the main body of the handle, I found an old marker, and what I'm doing is I'm putting little notches into the pommel, and that way it can kind of sit inside the end of the marker. I also did this for the main part of the blade. The blade has so little contact with the marker that I was a little bit worried about it snapping off pretty easily. So what I'm doing here is I found a little piece of foam that can fit inside the marker and I got a toothpick. So what we can do is we can poke the toothpick into the scrap piece of foam and also into the body of the blade and then we can put that whole assembly into the marker. So that way there's less stress on just the glue. Make sure you check the angle that you're putting the toothpick in since this will determine the angle that the marker will sit relative to the rest of the blade. Once you have all the pieces, then you want to heat seal the foam using a heat gun. Then all we need to do is glue everything together. Some parts I glued before I painted, some I glued after I painted. If you painted over your registration marks, just grab the template again and you can recopy that on. Once I got everything assembled, I tried to weather it, but I only had watercolors at home. So it didn't really work too well, but it was just something to try. Here's a look at the finished prop. There's definitely some stuff that could be improved, but I'm pretty happy with my first completed attempt. And that's about it. There'll be a link in the description to the template that I created. If you try it out, let me know how it goes. I'll be making more props from movies and video games in the future, so stay tuned if you're interested. And I'll see you next time!